So hi, um, I'm Ayush and I've been working in the Rapids engineering team for a little over a year now. And my work's primarily related to Python and workflows using Rapids as well as some, some dev around the Python API side of things. And today I'm going to be giving you an overview on uh, GPU computing and what it is and why it's become so relevant and important today. Um, before I begin the presentation, I'd also like to thank uh, Nick and other folks at NVIDIA who put these slides together and prepared them so that I can use them today. So um, I think it's, it's known that GPUs are used for gaming. And generally when people think of GPUs outside of say the supercomputing HPC or say industry setting, people think of GPUs as something that's used for gaming. And the reason GPUs are actually useful for gaming or things like video rendering is because when you're trying to render video, it's, it's all about representing curves and different polygons and shapes on the screen. And that turns out to be something that's compute intensive. That's something that cannot be done very quickly or it's difficult to do in real time using CPUs. And it's also something that's embarrassingly parallel. So when you actually try to render different shapes, there's this concept of rasterization, which converts different shapes into pixels that can be computed simultaneously in parallel and be rendered in the screen. And this is kind of why GPUs came about in the first place. And this is why it's so popular for video applications in gaming. Now, moving a bit further, uh, what people thought is instead of doing all of this parallel computation for displaying pixels and computing pixel values, what if you use that same kind of concept and apply it to other math problems? So say something like simulating computational fluid dynamics or like other supercomputing applications where the idea is somewhat the same that you want to massively, you want to take some task that's embarrassingly parallel you want to do multiple computations on that task and instead of actually rendering pixels, you want to calculate some values that are useful for your simulation. So that's sort of like the motivation behind why people thought GPU computing is, is more than just video games or video rendering. So this is sort of like a brief overview of what GPUs look like. And this is basically GPU computing is basically this idea of heterogeneous computing where you use the CPU and GPU together to get high performance. So if you can see here, the CPU usually has fewer cores. So I think these days you get CPUs with up to 24 cores, like desktop CPUs. And these cores are like beefy cores. So they have high clock speed and they can process tasks at a high rate. But they are not good at doing multiple tasks simultaneously because of the limitation of the number of cores. On the other hand, if you look at the GPU architecture right here, you have smaller cores with lesser clock speed, but you have you know, 500 to thousands of cores on a single GPU. So the whole idea is if you use this heterogeneous model where you have the GPU and CPU working together, all the compute intensive part of your code can be dispatched to the GPU, whereas the rest of the tasks can continue running on the CPU. And this approach together traditionally has helped de deliver significant acceleration for a lot of applications. So the whole idea behind GPU computing or GPU programming or this whole CUDA programming model is that you have a bunch of code and you have a specific section that's extremely compute intensive. And that's something that can be parallelized easily if you use the GPU. So what people do is they just take that particular section traditionally and you know, port that code over to use the GPUs instead, which is the section that's performance critical. Now, the rest of the code can run as is on the CPU. And this, this kind of programming model is what's been traditionally used in GPU computing. Um, with 
with this workshop and hopefully with as you understand more about rapids you probably see how we can actually reverse this and with the amount of compute growing today and the number of you know compute intensive applications we work with today you can see how with rapids we actually reverse this and you know use majority of the code run majority of the code on the gpu and then use a part of the cpu for processing Um, so again, going with the previous slide of GPU computing becoming popular, um, if, if you see here, uh, CPUs have been popular and have been around for a while. And uh, some of you might be familiar with Moore's law, which states that, you know, the number of transistors in a chip doubles every couple of years. So as you can see on this graph, you know, the performance kept increasing year on year by around 1.5 times. Um, and then somewhere in the mid 2000s, CUDA came along with this GPU computing and instantly it was able to accelerate applications because there are certain applications that are, that are still too, that are still so compute heavy that it's difficult to achieve the same performance you want on a CPU. And then the other aspect is that Moore's law like cannot keep going on forever. There's like a, there's like a limit to class there's like a limit as to what classical physics laws allows you and so what we're seeing now is that moore's law is slowly you know slowing down and the generation advances cpus are making year on year is not as much um, it turns out gpus haven't been affected by the same problem and gpu performance keeps growing year on year at the same rate And that kind of shows in, in, this, in these numbers. So since 2011, the number of applications that have been accelerated using the GPU and using CUDA has increased significantly. The number of developers who are now, you know, computing and programming using GPUs have increased 22 times. And the number of people using CUDA have also increased significantly. So this is kind of just like showing the numbers are just proving that, you know, as, as time goes, GPU computing has become more and more relevant. And if you see today in, in almost all accelerated computing applications, CUDA is, is like at the core of it and CUDA has really been significant in a lot of these applications. So if you see here in terms of libraries and frameworks, um, all these deep learning libraries and different machine learning libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow all have code in CUDA so that you can accelerate these libraries using the GPUs. If you look at other simulation tools and other tools used in HPC, like say ANSYS, those are some things that are accelerated using GPUs. Um, and if you see the performance of Google Net as it's grown, um, so here you had the initial performance on a Kepler 80 k GPU. And if you see within three years, you can now run the same thing on eight V 100s and it's the performance is 80 times. So this kind of just shows how much, how much a single GPU is improving year in year and how now with the improvement of software and other things, you can also scale out to multiple GPUs to get better performance. And here you can see that 127 of the top 500 supercomputing systems use NVIDIA GPUs and use CUDA to accelerate their workflows. So what's the motivation behind all of this? So there are a lot of different tough scientific problems out in the world and they require massive amounts of computing. And like in, in some cases, you know, just getting better performance is enough. Like if you just get general generational advances from year in, year in year on CPUs, that, that kind of does a job. But for really, really difficult problems, like say, you know, climate simulations or understanding protein structures, uh, you really need to change the approach of how you want to compute and that's where GPUs kind of come in. So if you look at say, understanding the HIV protein structure, this is something that traditionally takes, you know, 10 million node hours. And as a civilization, we, we don't really have that much time to, to spend on this one problem because it's, it's just too much time. 
and that's where you know these these new architectures like gpus come in and using gpus and the massively parallel computational model you can actually analyze the same thing in 16 days so before i proceed um, let's just take a look at this really nice demo that kind of gives you a visual idea and, and shows really clearly the difference between CPU and GPU processing. All right, I introduced you Leonardo, and he's going to paint a picture for you guys in the way that a CPU might do it, as a series of discrete actions performed sequentially, one after the other. In three, two, one. Uh, let me speed it up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Leonardo <laughs> 2.0. When we hit this trigger on this thing, 2,100 gallons of air goes through these accumulators, out these valves, into all 1,100 of these tubes, into these tubes in which the bottom of is a paintball. Each of those paintballs will fly across seven feet of space and in 80 milliseconds reach its target. Hopefully, when it's all said and done, it's gonna paint the Mona Lisa. <laughs> GPU painting dememonstration yep. in 10, nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, science class is now over. Thank you. <laughs> so hopefully that gave you like this visual image of CPUs versus GPUs, and the video kind of illustrates, you know, how parallel parallel cores or cores working simultaneously using you know same data to perform those instructions works, and and how you know doing a lot of independent activity at once just helps speed things up. So hopefully, you know, with this you have a clearer picture of of the broad level idea of GPU computing and why it's important. And with that overview, you can probably now dive into Rapids and Nick will give you an overview of Rapids and how it ties into this whole GPU computing ecosystem. Thanks. <laughs>